The idea that you need a minimum of 100 backtested trades to prove that a trading strategy works is simply a myth, an old wives tale, an urban legend. My name is Hugh and I'll show you the math behind why 100 backtested trades is a myth. I'll show you another number that gets commonly thrown around and why that's a myth also. And finally, I'll show you how to figure out the minimum number of backtested trades that you need. All right, this is the myth. You need at least 100 backtested trades to prove that a trading strategy works. Here's why that's not true. All right, let's take a day trading example. So let's say that you have a trading strategy that executes an average of one trade per day on the 15 minute chart. Now a good example of this would be the London breakout strategy. In the London breakout strategy, we're looking to draw a box around the price action before the London open. And then once price breaks out of that box, we're gonna take a trade in that direction, for example, this would have been a long as price broke out here. So as you can see, this system sets up quite a bit and you'll get about one trade a day depending on the rules that you use. If you want me to do a tutorial video along with some backtesting results of the London breakout strategy, leave a comment below. And if there's enough comments, then I'll make a video. So there are about 20 trading days in a month. And if you backtested 100 trades, that would be equivalent to about five months. Now let's jump over to the charts and I'll show you exactly why five months is not enough for a day trading strategy. So I'm here on the monthly chart of the Euro US dollar and I'm gonna highlight five months on this chart. Uh, you can see that in the, the bars at the bottom there. So that's five bars. And I'm gonna start moving this around. So let's say that you back tested only in the five months where this price action happened. So if you had a strongly trending system or a pyramiding system, you probably made a lot of money during this market because things were moving quickly. However, if you didn't test during this period here, let's move this over, where the market was going back and forth, then you wouldn't know how your system would trade in that type of market condition. Your system might have lost a lot of money. It might have actually blown out the entire account. You don't know because you didn't test during that period. Same thing goes for choppier markets like this area right here where price is really moving around a lot. This is why you need way more than 100 trades if you're back testing on a lower time frame chart. Now, if you're wondering about the software that I'm using, this is TradingView. And just real quick on TradingView, it's my favorite charting and trading software. And if you want to find out why I switched from MetaTrader to TradingView, you can watch the video that is coming up right now. Otherwise, there's a link in the description below and that will get you to TradingView. Now let's take a look at the other end of the spectrum. Let's take a look at a position trading strategy. So a position trading strategy is anything you're trading on the daily to the monthly, and it's taking a longer term trade that's gonna last weeks, months, maybe even years. So let's say that a trading strategy executed 36 trades on the daily chart from 2003 to 2022. The average winner was five times the average loser. The win rate was 47%, and the total return was 169%, or an average of about 9% per year. Now, if you were looking for a minimum of 100 trades, then you probably would have thrown this strategy out. Should you throw this strategy out? Well, I'll get to that in a little bit, but the strategy is profitable and it does have an edge. It just didn't have enough data to get to this arbitrary 100 trades number. So I would say that this is something that I would consider trading uh, depending on the other metrics of the system. So just because something didn't get 100 trades, it does not mean that it's not a viable system. You have to look at some other factors. And real quick on the flip side, don't stop at 100 trades either just because you think that's enough. The more trades you can get, the better. Now let's take a look at another commonly used number when it comes to statistics. A statistician might tell you that 30 trades is statistically significant and that's the minimum number of trades you should use. But as I just demonstrated, 100 trades is not enough for a day trading strategy, so 30 trades is definitely not enough. However, on the opposite side of the spectrum, that might be more than enough for a longer term strategy. Now, I know that a lot of people want that one magic number that's gonna be the minimum number that you can use uh, when you're back testing. However, in reality, it's not that simple. So let's take a look at why. The first thing to look at is the time frame you're trading on. If you're trading on a shorter time frame, you're gonna need more trades. If it's a longer time frame, you probably need fewer trades. The next thing to look at is the analytics of the strategy. You wanna look at the win-loss ratio. You wanna look at the Monte Carlo simulation drawdown. And these two things can help you figure out what to expect out of the strategy. The win-loss ratio is simply the average winning trade in dollars uh, divided by the average losing trade in dollars. 
and that gives you a number. So let's say that if you had a trading strategy where your winners were three times your losers, then you don't have to win as often compared to a strategy where you made uh, one to one winners to losers. If you've never heard of a Monte Carlo simulation, all it does is it takes your backtesting trades, it mixes them up and puts them in a different order. So that will give you a different maximum drawdown, a different number of losing trades in a row. And that will help you understand the maximum risk of your strategy. It'll give you the average drawdown in each of those scenarios. And you can even exclude random trades to simulate you missing trades. And when the simulation is run, you can see what the results will be. And that can show how robust your trading strategy is. So the bottom line here really is, how confident are you about risking your money based on the results of your back testing? So are you comfortable with that number of trades that you have? Do those trades include multiple market conditions? And how likely is this strategy to work in the future? All right, so here are more things to think about when considering the minimum number of back testing trades that you wanna use. So first of all, let's zoom out a little bit. Now, if you discover an edge in the market, you're actually ahead of 90% of the traders out there or the people who are learning how to trade. Because all successful trading is, is finding an edge and then applying that edge consistently. And most traders can't even find that edge. So if you do have an edge, I would recommend that you don't throw that away too quickly. Now, I know a lot of people are trying to make Lambo money in two months, uh, but in reality, successful trading is building multiple strategies on top of each other, making sure they're not highly correlated and smoothing out the return over the years. So if you find a strategy that has an edge, I would consider using it until I find something better. Next, for longer term trades, you might be able to get away with as few as 15 trades if the win loss ratio is high and you have confidence in the setup. This is very much on the lower end of the spectrum and I hesitate to use a number, but if you press me for a number on a longer term chart, I would say that's kind of where you might start. And this is only if the winners are quite a bit bigger than the losers. Now, like I mentioned before, for day trading strategies, you should get as many trades as possible across different types of markets. Now, if you do any optimization, be sure to leave out some of the dates from your optimization, then go back and see if your optimized system would have worked during those times that you left out. For example, let's say that you wanted to test 20 years of data. You might do the optimization on 15 years of data and then test that system on the last five years of data because you don't want an overly curved fit system. You don't want the system to only work in this type of market, but not this type of market and not this type of market. So if you're doing any type of optimization on a strategy, be sure not to optimize too much and only optimize on a portion of the data. Now, what if you don't have enough trades in one test and you're not confident about the results? Well, what you can do is you can test it across multiple markets and that can give you an additional level of confidence when you're taking trades in live market conditions. There may be cases where a strategy only works in one market. Let's say that it only works for stock indexes or it only works for the Euro US dollar. Now here's an example of a trading strategy that only worked well on one currency pair. If you wanna find out more about this trading strategy as well as which currency pair this is, well, just watch this video. I have the complete rundown on the system, how I tested it and how you can test it also. But my point here is, even if you can only find one market where a trading strategy works well in and it has a graph like this, then it's probably worth trading at least until you can find something better. There is also another trading strategy that I back tested that had a 75% win rate. And you can find that trading strategy in this video here. If that's the case, then still consider using it, but stack those strategies. So let's say that you have a strategy that only averages 9% a year, but if you have four or five, six of those strategies, that can really add up quickly. And I mentioned this before, but it's important to repeat it. You can always trade a profitable strategy until you find one that's better. So even though a strategy isn't giving you the return that you ultimately want, Practicing that strategy will help you develop discipline. It'll help you with your trading journal, filling out your trading journal and analyzing your trades. And trading that method successfully will give you confidence to trade other methods. So just like with everything else in trading, at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to figure things out. If you like that video, hit the thumbs up, the subscribe button, and the bell to get future backtesting videos from me. Remember, you're more powerful than you know. Keep expanding. Thanks for watching.